This game is tea and is not suitable for kids. <laughs> Don't let your kids watch it! Ah, spoiler alert! Hey there, honey! And guess. Look at the body. You know, the actual thing we need to look at. So, this is the eyewitness of the president's kidnapping, Jack Did Cameron. someone stab his eyes out? Or does he have the world's longest nose? That's part of his camera strap. Oh, I thought that was his nose! <laughs> Nope. <laughs> He's not look at me. What, ex what, what exactly did he witness? I recreated the state of the body based on the photos taken by the police. Ew. It appears he was struck in the head from behind. What? Forced trauma! The murder weapon was a brick, right? A brick? I mean, I that's guess a that was, brutal that's a go. brutal brick. Also, that could have been a child, for all we know. That could have been, like, the world's most un- behaved most evil child just like <laughs> spoiler alert one of the children in this orphanage was Dahlia <laughs> that would be so funny <laughs> I would love that actually I would you would it looked except the problem 12 years ago she wouldn't have been in the orphanage nobody wanted her no. <laughs> her parents disowned her well remember like her dad took the two of them away Iris got dumped off at the temple <laughs> Yeah, but that's because I- he was like, I can't handle two children that are evil. Why did you take them both? <laughs> I don't know. I didn't want Morgan to have anything in the divorce. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. Except she still had Pearl! That was with a different guy, though. Ooh. They look- but- but Pearl looks exactly like Dahlia and Iris. Mother's and jeans. I guess, but the mom looks ugly. Like, she doesn't look anything Mom like aged- them. The mom, mom didn't age well, she drank all that paint. Mom drank so much paint, jeez. <laughs> anyway, it looks like the ones from the garden. <laughs> the blood that flowed from the, his head is splattered all over the surroundings. Here, take this! It's Mr. Cameraman's autopsy report! Cameron's autopsy report jotted down in the organizer. Bludgeon to death. I, that's different. I won't rest until I've inspected every suspicious looking nook and cranny. I don't think it was like, he got hit on the head so hard he died. I think it's like, he got hit on the head of a brick and cut his head clean open and he bled to death from the head wound. Oh, uh, well, there's something over here that I'm interested in because there's blood on it. It's the brick. <laughs> this is the brick that was used as the murder weapon. Bricks, 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 bricks. It clutches your head. You can find bricks like this all over the garden. They must have used one of them as a weapon. Ouch. I don't know why this is so funny. Like, because of course I know this is like one of the darkest like okay because cases, because honestly. bricks are like super heavy. But in my in my mind, I could see a child just throwing a brick or like any <laughs> old person like. <laughs> <laughs> that was the best sound effect. <laughs> 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 Jack Cameron was a freelance journalist. He was killed because he witnessed the president's kidnapping. The blood really stands out in the recreation. It's giving me the heebie-jeebies. Heebie-jeebies? That's like something Daphne would say from Scooby-Doo. Even in the original photo, it looks brutal enough. A lot of blood was spilled. The back of his head is covered in blood. This must be where all of the blood spilled from. According to the autopsy report, he was struck in the back of the head with a brick. Indeed. It's likely that the killer approached Mr. Cameron from behind. Hmm? Is the victim holding something in his right hand? That's also written in the case files. Um, it seems he was holding onto a button. A button? Did he tear it off the culprit's clothes? No, he tore it off a snowman. Bloodstained button data jotted down in the organizer. Although I'll be honest, when I first saw it because my eyes are so bad, I thought he was holding a Pokeball. <laughs> I assume this is the victim's cell phone. That's right! Um, apparently Mr. Cameron gave his eyewitness testimony over the cell phone. What do you mean by over the cell phone? After Cameron found the president, it seems he called his girlfriend. But she didn't answer the phone, so Cameron left a message on her answering machine. The tape's in the case files, too. You want to hear it? Please. Oh, I have to give him a voice. Hello, Jill? Are you asleep already? It's Jill Crane! Gosh dang it's Jill it's... Crane, yep. I'm in front of the facility now, but something's not right. President Juan is here of all places. And what's more, crap, the light just went off. I can barely see a thing now. I can't believe it, but it almost looks like he's being kidnapped. I thought I'd let you know.
What was that sound at the end? Probably the brick. It seems he was attacked while he was still on the phone. Imagine being Joe Crane and hearing your boyfriend get murdered over an answering machine message. Yeah. Also, how old is Jill Crane? She was like... We're checking. We're checking. Yeah. Okay, so Jack Cameron, he's... Oh, he's deceased. He's just deceased. Uh, Jill Crane we, probably also is deceased. Oh, uh, we don't have her profile. We should. I she thought was, she was, was like she 30. She was in her 30s, yeah. Okay, so she was like dating him in, like, in college, probably. No, she was definitely like early 20s at the youngest back then. Oh, okay. Mid-20s, probably. Okay. Agent Lang, if I may. What was the name of Mr. Cameron's beloved? I'm pretty sure I heard her name was Jill Crane. Frickin' Jill. Frickin' Jill? So it's true. Did you say Jill? This was why she was seeking revenge for 12 long years. Frickin' Jill. The feelings and the items Miss Crane inherited from her beloved brought her to the auction. She had come to exact revenge on the conductor, Blaze. I forgot about that entirely. But Miss Crane tried to get revenge on Blaze, right? She may have wanted to get revenge on him for covering up the kidnapping case. Or perhaps she thought Blaze himself was the kidnapper. Th that would not be out of character for him He's at all. He's like, I kidnapped, but I'm gonna be in the prosecutor's it's so, side. It's so interesting because like we get Blaze convicted in the last case, but like in this case we just keep learning just how vile he really was. It is interesting. Back to the folky music. Yellow flowers fallen here. It's called a lion lily. Indeed, Francis has told us earlier. Apparently, it comes from Asia. Yep, in the language of flowers, I think it means the bond between partners in crime. It's the bond between parent and child. Close enough. Hey, P dude, hey, dude nice shoes, nice shoes. <laughs> the key to this case lies in the footprints. Do the case files say anything about his shoes? Um, she says 11. No athlete's foot or corns on his feet to speak of. His socks were beige, just like his trousers. He was kind of like an old man's. Perhaps he should try wearing a bolder, brighter color to better accent his feet? Maybe perhaps he should try wearing a bolder. <laughs> huh. Those fashion tips were surprisingly helpful. It's supposed to be an investigation report, though. Why didn't they say, like, he's wearing, like, you know, Nikes or whatever? Hmm. The victim was carrying a camera. Oh! According to the case files, it seems he only managed to take a single photo. Of course, and it's probably gonna be a photo of his thumb. <laughs> <laughs> Here it Don is! Donkey Kong like a <laughs> Here it is. That's the pretty convincing! This is... Isn't that the president? Hold on. Um, president, and... Uh... Here's the thing. <laughs> that looks that like one of the hitmen from Ghost Trick. <laughs> yeah. Ne nearsighted Jigo. Nearsighted what it, what's... Here's the thing, um... Uh, Hannigan, I mean, uh... <laughs> that was <one's> Rooster. <laughs> that was a Rooster. She's not wearing the same coat. You think that's Roland? It should be, but Roland's not that small. With a no, coat. No, she's small. Again, she just wears the fur coat that's Plus literally made of ago. animals. So. Yeah. He's being held at gunpoint. This must be the scene the victim witnessed. So, the, pre the person in the coat must be the kidnapper. Indeed. It seems like some sort of disguise. If the logic of Agent Lane's father is correct. Honestly, it looks like Shifa. Or Sheila. Shifa. Sheena. Sheena. Looks like her, except Sheena would have been like 11. <laughs> Melisto Mew. <laughs> Melisto Mew would have been like 11. Um, no. Yeah. No. In the flashback, Callisto Mew was like in her early 20s. Like yeah. in the 18 years ago. Oh, wait. No, hang on. Wait. No. How that, long ago? No, that's not it? right. That's not right. No, you're, no, you're right. That was like a six year ago flashback. Yeah. She's like 22 now. When, when we got her convicted. No, she was like, um... Like she was 22 30. then, now she's yeah. 30. Yeah, yeah. that still wouldn't... No, she would be a little... Aren't you a little young to be kidnapping the president? <laughs> like, she'd be 18 holding the gun... I mean, here's the thing, though. I feel like... The fact that she got... Okay, the, the person should be Patricia <laughs> Rowland. <laughs> okay, oh. fine. <laughs> Why is there only one photo? Perhaps he was killed before he could take any more. He's not like a lot of like... <laughs> True. He's a bad journalist, then. Cameron's photo jo data jotted down to my organizer. Yeah, yeah. Nice pants. Yeah, what kind yeah. of pants do you wear? Jack Cameron was a free... Oh, we already know this. He didn't tell us whether he was wearing Levi's or not. He's wearing cargo pants. Oh, yeah. Has a lot of pockets. I think that's everything. 
Logic? <sighs> Free footprints, murder weapon, the brick. Um, maybe we don't have everything. Well, there are definitely three, three, three footprints and three flower beds. Okay. Perhaps this is the true nature of the monster's footprints. True nature? Compare the positions of the free footprints and the free flower beds on the left. Ah! The exposed areas of dirt match the areas where the flower beds were. So Blaze dug holes in front of where each of the three flower beds used to be. Exactly. Now why would he do such a thing? How would he- how did he dig through the concrete? That's what I want to know. He, he used special tools from his garage. So in the- he's like, and then like, John just comes Hi guys, in. heck of a day, huh? Yeah, like what? <laughs> he can't just be in the film lot. Yeah, he did it in the middle of the night. Yeah, but then John was there. Not until later on. Or, he did it like at night before John showed up. Okay. I believe we have a piece of evidence that tells us why. Why did Blaze dig holes in the ground near the flower beds? Because of the report. Because that happened. The report from Patricia Rowland to Blaze de Best. It said that something was laid to rest in front of the flower bed. So, Blaze was following Miss Rowland's instructions to dig it up. Why would he dig up three holes? The report didn't state which of the three flower beds the item was in front of. Oh, so Blaze didn't know exactly where to dig. That's why he had to dig up all three spots. Most likely, yes. I'm sure Blaze himself was none too happy about that. Good. <laughs> he went through all that trouble. I wonder what he was trying to dig up. Trying to dig up brick, 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 brick. 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 <laughs> I somehow, I don't think so. <laughs> the brick was buried. <laughs> Probably they buried the single flower. I already checked this area earlier, but it never hurts to take another look. Nah. We don't need that. We never examined the doors. Oh. The door! I remember seeing it from somewhere! Of course you would. It looks exactly like the Grand Tower door we saw earlier. But this is a recreation from 12 years ago. That means the door has been here since then. It seems when the Grand Tower was built, they decided to reuse the door rather than destroy it. It's like the old saying goes. Discover something new by heating up something old. Oh. It seems she's understood the correct meaning of a saying for once. Hmm... But if you're using a microwave to do it, don't heat it up for over five minutes. That is true. Well, I was like, what you doing? Mr. Snowman. Mr. Shmee. Maybe we go over... Maybe we can talk to Lane more. No, I don't want to do another roll call. I wanted to talk to Lane. Hey, Lane. Hey, girl. What do you know about- Oh, can I not present the brick? Oh. The SS5 incident that occurred 12 years ago. I guess I should tell you everything. My old man failed to protect the country's number one VIP. Because of that, he put everything on the line for his hunt and for the culprit after the incident. During that time, my old man, he was like a lifeless ghost. If he had just caught his prey, he might have been able to forgive himself. But that shrew Roland, she managed to get away scot-free. My old man couldn't repay his debt to the president, nor could he unravel the case. And so began the nightmare that our wolf pack still haven't woken up from to this day. Satisfied? When his clan's honor was damaged, young Lane's heart was wounded just as badly. Agent Lane, I can sympathize with your father's regrets. However, all we can do now is perform a thorough investigation of this case. I hope your words will serve as some kind of clue. <laughs> That's all you have to say? Sheesh, all that talking was a real waste of time. I actually don't remember what to do here. Maybe we present, like, Jill's thing? Her testimony? What is this? Do you wish for me to crush it with my gavel? 
Absolutely not! It was merely a joke. But the goddess of law does not permit this gavel to be used trivially. You looked quite serious about it, though. Yeah, the tape. Is there a tape? That's his testimony. Oh. Oh, yeah, we already saw all that. Blaise de Best and Patricia Rowland are both connected to this case. That much we know for sure. Indeed. However, it seems there's more to it than that. Jill Crane and President Huang. The key to understanding the link between their deaths lies here as well. The connection between them is tenuous at best. For that reason, we must tread carefully to follow it to its conclusion. In that case, we should take our time and carefully examine every nook and cranny. I thought we already did. I even just replaced Little Thief's batteries with new ones. It runs on batteries. Yep, electronics that are portable tend to do so. There's a flower bed. Flower bed. It's a nine uh, well, we... milli. And the do -do 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 we didn't examine the other one, though. That's because we can't. Great. Awesome. Maybe okay. We can... Let's try linking the brick up to why did Blaze take us? Why I not? I really think. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that's what I thought. <laughs> but maybe he buried the brick. <laughs> he buried, he buried the brick. Like, he tried he to get... He couldn't let it be found. He tried to get rid of the evidence, like, twice. Maybe you have to talk to the journalist again? No. I didn't know if they were like, Oh, I knew Jack maybe Cameron. Hey, he was my hey, mentor. Talk to, talk to Ray. Uncle Ray? I don't think he, we can actually say anything to him, though. Yeah, like, okay. we can't present stuff to him. Oh, this pillar appears to be burnt. Forgot about According this. According to the files, it seems there was a fire on the evening of the incident. What a coincidence! A fire? Fire. Um, let's see here. Huh? It says that one of the children at the orphanage spilled... Kerosene? <laughs> and set it on fire as a prank! <laughs> Tom <laughs> Riddle! Tom Riddle confirmed. Oh, Tom Riddle was in the story. Ooh! <laughs> I guess Japanifornia is close to Britain. Yeah, I guess that kid had far too much energy. And thanks to that, we can't make out any of the footprints near the main hall. Or Dahlia! Fire data it's jotted Dahlia. down in the organizer. Dahlia loves setting fire to bridges. That was the one thing. We've learned pretty much all that we can about the situation at the time of the murder. Oh, in that case, is there any- is, is there another scene you'd like to recreate? Yes. Would you do the honors? I would like you to recreate the scene with the victim witnessing the president's kidnapping. Okay. Alright, I'll recreate the scene based on Mr. Cameron's photo. Mr. Cameron is standing in the middle of the flower beds. Oh wait, there's two people. And the president and his kidnapper are standing on the roof. The road. <laughs> My old man based his initial investigation on this man's eyewitness testimony. <laughs> on the roof. As a result, it led him to believe that the kidnapping and this facility are related. And that's how he came to suspect the head of the orphanage, Patricia Rowland. Yeah. She needed cash. But in court, Blaze Boy, the best treated this testimony as if it meant nothing. Why would he do that? The president and his kidnapper were not standing inside the orphanage grounds. So a connection between the orphanage and the kidnapping was difficult to prove. I see. It's not like they were being seen inside the orphanage, after all. <laughs> no matter how much evidence the detectives gather at the crime scene, it doesn't mean squat if the prosecutor won't use it in court. Boys the Best had some kind of connection with Patricia Rowland. I figure if they had some kind of deal going on. In other words, you think that Blaze was one of the kidnappers? That's also in character. However, your father was convinced that Patricia Rowland was the culprit. There's two. You can see. Your father was a highly capable investigator, I presume. Might he have had some other basis for his conclusion besides the eyewitness testimony? Yeah. I figure he did, but I have no idea what it was. My old man never really talked much about this case. 
Agent Lane's father, Dai Long Lei. President Huan's most trusted confidant. The truth he discovered was suppressed by Blaze de Best. First, we must find that hidden truth. Moment of the incident. Hey, girls. What a Stop! Got it! It's still just talking about how green everything is. I won't rest until I've inspected every suspicious looking nook and cranny. Person. Well, I mean, there's obviously the button. We'll get that in a bit. Dai Jun Huan. Twelve years ago, he was still the president of Zane Fa. Does he seem a bit younger? Though it might be hard to tell since it's so dark. Indeed. And with the situation being what it was, his facial expression seems a bit strained. Wonder where the president was taught taken after this. Oh, so he's wearing his the inflatable abandoned suit. Warehouse. We don't know that yet. However, if the answer to that question lies here, it should become clear when we continue the investigation. It's the president's kidnapper. Let's try drawing out whatever we can from their appearance. Right, I got it. Their appearance, their appearance... First things first, the kidnapper threatened the president with a gun. Look at how they're holding the gun. It's like they're trying to show it off. Totally not cool! Unfortunately, we cannot see the person's face because it's hidden by their coat and hat. And look at that popped collar. It's like they're trying to be all that. Totally not cool. Their body seems relaxed, suggesting, suggesting that they had a composed mental state. They even had one hand stuff in their pocket. Totally not cool at all. Okay, I'm sorry, but that's... Stuff I've drawn out from their appearance. That may be true, but... Um, about the snowman? When we recreated the scene with where Mr. Mc... I almost said Mr. Mr. Mc McCrane. <laughs> Mr. Mr. McDonald. <laughs> Mr. Cameron was killed. It had already melted. Its scarf was all soggy, and one of the button eyes was missing. Indeed. At this stage, it appears that most of its original form was still intact. Although, there is one spot that looks unnaturally lacking. Poor thing. I bet some naughty kid must have plucked it off. Although, from a thief's perspective, that kid does have some promise. Was it plucked off by one of the children at the orphanage? No, perhaps it was taken by an entirely different person altogether. What if Dijun Huang or whatever was like, Ooh, it's a snowman, and like takes off one of the buttons. <laughs> Why and... did you give him the Wesley Stickler voice? I don't know, I just I thought like... I dare to say, it's a snowman. <laughs> no, it's a snowman, and then, and then like, he turns around, the person's like, freeze. Put your the hands snowman's up. face contradicts the blue truck. <laughs> no, it. The, the, the button. Eureka! Eureka! This snowman. Wouldn't you say it's missing something? <gasps> it's right eye's missing. I thought it was just really bad. Precisely. And what's more, that missing eye happens to be in our possession. The button that Mr. Cameron was holding onto. It's got the exact same design as the snowman's left eye. If we assume this button was indeed the snowman's eye. A huge contradiction arises. If this button is the snowman's eye, what contradiction arises? The location of the victim, the location of the snowman, or the location of the president? Location of the victim. The victim was holding on to the button. Furthermore, the button was stained with blood. In other words, he grabbed the button after he was attacked. For example, if we were to picture it in this way. After being struck in the back of the head, Mr. Cameron lost his balance. As he was falling, he reached out his hand towards the nearby snowman. However, it could not support his weight, and he collapsed while still grasping the button. Huh? That means... Mr. Cameron was near the snowman when he was attacked? Indeed. At the very least, he must have been within arm's reach. However... It's quite clear that he would not have been able to reach it from his current position unless he has had little arms as long as Lanky Kong. Even then, like, Lanky Kong's arms don't go that far. They do in the final boss fight. Mr. Cameron's footprints only led to the flower bed. Can we be certain that those footprints really are Mr. Cameron's? It seems we'll need to investigate them one more time. Understood. I'll recreate the time his body was discovered scene one more time. Love that sound effect. These footprints should match up with Mr. Cameron's shoes, right? Let's inspect them again. 
These footprints. Are they really Mr. Cameron's? They're from size 11 shoes, and these huge footprints match up with Mr. Cameron's shoes. No matter how you look at it, they're moving steadily towards the center of the flower beds. But when Mr. Cameron was attacked, he grabbed the button from the snowman. Even with a great thief's peak, peak human conditioning, your arm just can't stretch that far. Let alone an ordinary civilian, it'd be completely impossible. The footprints come from the shoes worn by the victim. <coughs> Bless you. <coughs> Bless you. Thank you. Just as the case files say. However, does that mean that Mr. Cameron was the owner of these shoes? We should re-examine Mr. Cameron's shoes. I did that the first time! They want you to Oh no, again. my shoes! These shoes should match the footprints, however. Hmm? These shoes. It seems like they were not the ones originally worn by the victim. What do you mean? If you look closely, you'll see the laces were tied up strangely. And the size doesn't seem to fit quite right either. Victim shoes data jotted down in the organizer. That would mean these huge footprints leading up to the victim's feet. Were most likely made by someone other than the victim. So then the footprints leading to and from the victim's head must be Mr. Cameron's. No, not necessarily. They seem a little too small to be the victim's footprints. So none of the footprints are his... Then which way did Mr. Cameron walk from? It's quite simple. The victim did not walk here on his own accord, but rather, he was carried here after he was murdered by the culprit. The question now becomes, where was he killed and carried from? Perhaps it was near the snowman after all? Mr. Cameron's body was moved. If we consider the button he was holding on to, it's highly likely that he was killed near this snowman. I should take a closer look. I won't rest until I've inspected every suspicious looking nook and cranny. The snowman's become a sad sight to look at. It can't be helped. Snow and ice both melt away with time. Just like the mysteries of the cases you've solved, Mr. Edgeworth. As time passes, those mysteries melt away while you continue to keep your cold. Cool. You do realize I'm racking my brain trying to solve those mysteries during a case. Oh hey, it's a missing brick! <laughs> huh? There's a brick missing here. Gee, I wonder what piece of logic that could link up with. <laughs> the rest the are all in order. Beds. It's strange that the, only this one is missing. Really, Edgeworth? Bum, 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 Murder bum, weapon, bum, the brick. Missing, there was a missing, missing brick. brick. What, did, mm. but what did Blaze dig up? A brick! A brick. <laughs> Perhaps the missing brick was the one used as the murder weapon. Yeah. Well, that was unnecessary. <gasps> yeah, it seems to be just the right size to fit in that gap perfectly. Was Blaze a kidnapper? There was a brick near the snowman. And the body was moved. Clearly, he was near the snowman when he died. As I thought, it seems the murder actually occurred near the snowman. Both the button Miss Cameron was holding Miss <laughs> Miss Cameron. Jill would have been Miss Cameron. They weren't like married, were no, they? No, no. They were dating though. Then she also notice Crane. Notice their Jack and Jill. <laughs> That's funny. Both the button Mr. Cameron was holding and the murder weapon came from there. Indeed. Also, if we assume that the killer picked up the brick near the snowman, and then tried to sneak up behind Mr. Cameron. Mr. Cameron totally would have seen the brick, but the brick- <laughs> The brick picking up the purse? <laughs> That's probably an anime. <laughs> a brick? Brick man. Brick man? No, that's the next Mega Man boss. <laughs> brick man? That's true, yeah. <laughs> da, 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 da. It's just da, 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 da. like- It's just- Brick man. Brick he just- man. He, The boss fight starts, he comes out of the school- <laughs> And then just starts throwing bricks like dodgeballs. Oh, wow. Anyway, Mr. Cameron totally would have seen the person picking up the brick. That's like uh, in Apollo where it's like, the noodle stand pulled the man. <laughs> exactly. Kay, please update the recreation. Mr. Cameron was not in the middle of the flower beds, but near the snowman. Kay, I'm on it. 